Chen Shuyi took photos in the car and sent it to Xi'an, saying, I've been busy all day, really want to have some late night snacks. Xi'an, upon seeing this, thought, busy, busy with what exactly? He responds, said, having late night snacks is not good for your health. Zhang Shuyi entered the office and asked, Xiaoyu, what are you busy with? Kishio replied, I'm figuring out ways to connect with industry experts. She asked, is it still about the previous draft? I've read your drafts, no need to look further, the endorsement from the experts is already sufficient. Qi said, but Su Yuling said. She interrupted and said, you need to make your own judgment. How about this? Bring out your initial draft, and we can work on it together for additional adjustments. Nanan walked into the restaurant and asked a man, Hello, are you Chen Sheng? He replied, I'm sorry, I'm not. Cheng Sheng stood up from another table and said, Reporter Kong, I am Chen Sheng. She apologized, saying, I'm sorry, my mistake. Nanan said to Chen Sheng, You sounded very steady and experienced on the phone, so I didn't expect Assistant Chen to be this young. He replied, I'm 25 years old not that young. Chen Shuyi guided Kishio in completing the draft. She remarked, Xiaoyu, you have great insight, and you've written it well. Kishio responded, Thank you, Shuyi sister. Xi'an sent a WeChat message to Kishio, asking, Have you eaten? How was your day? She replied, Today was great. Shuyi sister is back and personally taught me step by step. Your niece here has surprisingly high comprehension, and we finally finished work just before midnight. Shiyi is really amazing, with a lot on her plate, yet she stayed overtime with me. After sending the message, she bid farewell to Jen Shiyi and left. Jen Shiyi was alone in the office after finishing overtime. She said to herself, Shiyin hasn't shown up at all today. She posted a map of the office on her moments, asking, can anyone help deliver a bed to the magazine office? After packing up and preparing to leave, Xi'an called her and said, come downstairs. She went downstairs, and the guy from the coffee shop called out to her, saying he had specially set aside some egg tarts for her and wanted to give them to her. Xi'an came over, hugged her, and said, let's go, did you pay for the egg tarts? She shook her head. Xi'an walked over to the guy and said, payment code. The guy quickly took out his phone. Chen Shuyi said to the guy, thank you. Xi'an pulled her along and said, haven't had enough chat. She asked him, how did you come here? He replied, it's on the way. Xi'an said, reporter Zheng is quite popular. Chen Shuyi replied, just average, nothing special. When Chen Shuyi tried to open the back door to get in, he stopped her and said, you're not sitting in the front passenger seat. Are you planning to treat me as your driver? After Su Yuling helped a man into the car and stood by the street, she saw Xi'an escorting Zhen Shuyi into the car and exclaimed, Zhen Shuyi, Xi'an. Zhen Shuyi sneezed twice in the car and said, Who's talking behind my back? Feeling hungry, she turned to look at the egg tarts and then at Xi'an. She then asked him, Where are you going now? He replied, For a late night snack. She looked at him in surprise. She asked him, isn't eating late at night bad for your health? He replied, for you, it's not late night, it's dinner. He cheerfully exclaimed, great. But I only want to eat noodles. They were in a noodle shop, and they only ordered one bowl of noodles. Chen Shuyi said to him, are you really not going to try it? These noodles are extremely delicious. He replied, I won't eat. She mentioned that she used to come here often with someone and started recalling memories of eating noodles with her ex-boyfriend. At that moment, her ex-boyfriend actually arrived with some friends. She quickly ran to the restroom to hide. Xi'an listened to her ex-boyfriend and his friends talking about their breakup. Suddenly, her ex-boyfriend stood up and left the noodle shop, and his friends followed, leaving the place. Xi'an sent her a message on WeChat, asking, Do you need me to come pick you up? She quickly ran out and apologized, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting for so long. Xi'an said to her, with such big eyes, how come your judgment is so poor? She responded, everything was fine, why are you launching a personal attack on me? After thinking for a moment, she added, 
I admit my judgment used to be not so good, but now it has improved a lot he remarked, but now your standards are too high. Jen Shuyi fell asleep in the car. Xi'an drove to her house, nudged her face, and she woke up, saying, we're here. I'll head back now. Take care on the way. As she got out of the car and walked towards her home, he called out to her, Jen Shuyi. She asked, what's up? He said, don't eat anything before going to bed. She replied, not eating anything can cause low blood sugar and also affect sleep quality. Take care of yourself, manager Shi. Goodbye. Jen Shuyi returned home and opened the refrigerator, finding it empty. She decided to order takeout. Meanwhile, Xi'an arrived at a takeout place. Jen Shuyi, feeling hungry, wondered, where is my takeout? There was a knock at the door, and she excitedly said, it's here. Upon opening the door, she found no one but noticed a container of food on the floor. Picking it up, she realized, this doesn't look like takeout. While she was puzzled, Xi'an messaged her on WeChat, check your door for the takeout. Xi'an was outside her house, looking at her window. It turned out that Xi'an had bought a thermos and gone to the noodle shop to get her favorite noodles. Jen Shuyi approached the window, saw him drive away, and then happily enjoyed her noodles. While eating, she said, I didn't expect him to be so thoughtful, to care so much about me. She took a photo of the noodles and sent him a message on WeChat, saying, the noodles are really delicious. He asked, don't you eat green onions? She replied, hmm she then asked, were you this considerate with your ex-girlfriend? He said, I am pretty much the same with you. Xi'an sent a WeChat message, saying, there's no need to go hungry for unimportant people in the future. She replied with a message about the hazards of eating late at night, along with a picture. Next day, Su Yuling came to the office, placed a cup of coffee on Jen Shuyi's desk, and said, I bought this specially for you. Nanan asked, what's going on with her? Jen Shuyi replied, do I look like I know? Nanan picked up the cup and joked, it's not poisoned, is it? The editor-in-chief said, let's start the meeting. Xi'an, go turn on the lights. Su Yuling said, I'll do it. She walked over to turn on the lights. Jen Shuyi and Nanan exchanged a glance. Yu Yu is giving a lecture. He says, today, let's talk about something everyone likes, money. A professional photographer is recording him. He thinks to himself, what's going on here? The editor-in-chief says, the holidays are approaching, and you need to wrap up your year-end work. Also, next Wednesday, there's a gratitude dinner hosted by Mr. Guan. Yuling, Mr. Guan is your client, you should attend. So Yuling responds, Editor-in-Chief, on that day, I have an interview scheduled. Let Shiyi go, it's more suitable for her. The whole room is surprised. The Editor-in-Chief asks, what did you say? She replies, I have prior commitments that day, and it's more fitting for Shiyi to go. Nanan quips, is she possessed? Jen Shiyi adds, I'm busy with a feature on new energy vehicle batteries, I might not have time. How about letting Kunan go? The editor-in-chief agrees, okay. The editor-in-chief says, the assessments for the two interns are coming up. What are your plans, mentors? Su Yuling replies, Beer has been working very hard, and I will help her pass the assessment and secure her position. Jen Shuyi adds, Xiaoyu has made significant progress, and she has developed the fundamentals of writing. Next, I plan to have her join me in conducting interviews with Minjiu and Yun Chuang. Kishio immediately says, no, Shiyi sister, I can't drag you down like that. Kishio sees Yu Yu's call, excitedly runs out of the meeting room to answer, and says, Professor Yu, this is the first time you've called me. I'm so happy. He says, Miss Chi, please don't hire a substitute photographer to take pictures of me in my class in the future. She responds, I have been really busy lately. He says, this is a foundational course. You should study the material, if you have questions, come to the school when you have time to ask me. She says, okay. Jen Shuyi sends a message to Xi'an on WeChat, saying, last time, you treated me to noodles. Tonight, it's my turn to treat you. Xi'an is in the office, and he responds, hmm she says, I'll decide what to eat. 
He responds, Hmm. She says, Then come pick me up after work. He says, Hmm. In her mind, she thinks, Why is he always saying hmm, hmm, hmm? She asks him, Are you in a bad mood now? He replies, Hmm. She and asks her, Don't you have anything to do? She replies, Thinking about you is my biggest task. Kishio is called into the editor in chief's office. The editor in chief asks her, Is your article too critical? Do you know that they are our advertising clients? She replies, Yes, I know. That's why I researched all the information before writing. The editor in chief says, Go back and tone it down a bit, beautify it. Surprised, she says, Editor in chief, the media is the voice of the public and the conscience of society. I can't write overly exaggerated articles, and I won't. The editor in chief remarks, like mentor, like disciple. You're just like Zhen Shuyi. Zhen Shuyi sits in Xi'an's car and says to him, I didn't expect my disciple to have such high awareness and courage, daring to stand up against the editor in chief. Our editor in chief must be having a headache now. He replies, Your intern is indeed interesting. She says, Yes, her aesthetic sense and vision are both on point. Lately, she's been very motivated even attending Professor Yu's lectures at the Finance University whenever she has free time. He says, hmm. Zhen Shuyi says, Professor Yu's lectures are in high demand. I've attended a few of Professor Yu's lectures myself, and he is an excellent speaker. If I had such a young and charismatic professor when I was in college, I would have definitely studied finance. He asks, really? Zhen Shuyi says, really, Yu Yu is quite famous in our kingdom. I heard he skipped two grades, then got a full scholarship at Harvard, and later earned a dual degree at Cambridge. He's constantly publishing sci papers, and I heard he's particularly fond of sports. Who wouldn't like a genius professor like him? He asks, do you like him too? She says, come on, who wouldn't like someone like him? She in turns the car around and heads back home. She asks, where are we going? Weren't we going out to eat? He says, since you enjoy attending classes so much, I'll take you to catch up on some lessons. In Xi'an's study, an entire wall shelf is filled with various trophies, certificates, awards, and more. He says, just now, I suddenly felt that reporter Zhang needs to broaden her horizons and understand the universality of human affairs. Otherwise, she might think some people and things are unique. She picks up a trophy and says, so manager Xi not only excels in academics but also has so many achievements. It's truly humbling. How did you manage all this? Xi'an takes out a string of medals from a cabinet. She looks at the medals and asks, why isn't there one from 2019? He says, in 2019, I started working on Yun Chuang, and since then, I haven't had time to participate in marathons. Xi'an says, I was very interested in investment when I was a graduate student. After graduation, I wanted to work in a related field. However, to fulfill my father's wish, I joined Minjiu. I found that Minjiu lacked a modern management system, but it was difficult to change. So, my brother-in-law is more suitable than me to safeguard this family legacy. She says, you handed over Minjiu to your brother-in-law. He says, it's not handing over. My brother-in-law has also contributed a lot to Minjiu, and it's what he deserves. I have my own ideals, I want to help entrepreneurs who want to make society better, to explore more possibilities. Zhen Shuyi says, I think you're very brave, daring to break the existing pattern to pursue your dreams and desires. She says, you've achieved it, and you've done it well. He asks, really? Then what reward do you have for me? She steps forward and gives him a kiss.